I'm Matt Reese, the editor for Ohio's Country Journal and with Ohio Agnet, I'm here on the farm of Austin Wiseman. We are in Morgan County, which is in the heart of the drought here in Ohio in 2024. First, Austin, can you just tell me a little bit about your operation and where we're at right here? Yeah, so we're located kind of on the uh, western side of Morgan County. Uh, we have a 250 brood cow operation and we also uh, finish cattle as well. Um, the particular farm we're on today is a uh, 120-acre farm. Uh, it's mainly used for pasture, a very small amount of woodland. Um, besides that, we have uh, we own about 2,000 acres uh, spread across a couple counties here and uh, raise crops, corn, hay, alfalfa. Um, as far as that goes, that pretty much sums up the farm. We've uh, had a challenging situation in terms of rainfall this year. Can you give me an overview of the of the growing season and how it's been? We're standing in some pretty rough looking pasture right here. You guys rotationally graze and you're having to rotate a lot more often because of the dry weather. So how has the rainfall been and, and what are some of the challenges here in 2024? So since about the 1st of June, uh, today is what, September the 6th, uh, we've had in the neighborhood of three and a half to four inches of rain in that entire time period. Um, yes, we rotational graze this. Uh, typically, depending on which piece they're in, acreage-wise, is normally three to four days. Um, if we're really wet, we might get a week on some of the bigger ones. And now we're, some of them, we, we put them in in the morning, we move them in the evening. Um, just for a simple reason, just pick off what little bit there is growing. Um, then, of course, we're supplementing with hay as far as we go from there. Um, as far as our hay conditions go, you know, traditionally, you know, our second cutting hay, we're normally averaging two bales, round bales of the acre. This year, we're a quarter of the bale of the acre. And as far as third cutting goes, it, there's there's not even a third cutting within reason of us making. As far as the corn goes, you know, like I said, we've started chopping a little bit. We won't really know until we get into it. Some of it looks, I'm, I'm scared to even admit that it's our own corn. Yeah, it's uh, been a really tough season here. And one challenge with that hay that you mentioned is not only are hay yields down, but you're also feeding the hay and using up your supplies for winter. And normally in this pasture, you say you can get grazing, keep those cattle out here grazing till about December. How long are you going to make it this year? Well, that's a good question. I mean, if we keep feeding hay, I guess we can winter them here all winter. Um, I guess right now we're hoping, hoping to the 1st of November. Um, praying that we get some rain you know some late fall pasture but i'm not sure as the conditions you see here if it's gonna you know even if we get rain i don't think it's gonna do us much good here now uh one other challenge with drought you get uh a reduction of growth of the stuff you want that's good for the cattle and you get uh, increased growth in things like ironweed and some other invasives potentially that can come in and that aren't good for the cattle is that a concern for you i think moving forward it will be yes um I can see maybe maybe not necessarily this fall because we're so dry, but I can see next spring maybe having to spot spray some areas to try to keep the invasives out or potentially may have to spray the entire pasture. Now, uh, this is a new-to-you farm. You've been renting it for a while, but uh, recently purchased it. And part of the appeal of this farm was that it had a well on it, which was great for water source for the cattle. Uh, that's been a challenge, though, and you guys had to make some adjustments here with the dry weather in 2024. Can you tell me about that? Yes, yeah, so uh, typically we had water set up at, at each paddock. Um, about the middle of June, the well went dry. Um, so there's a big pond on the, on the farm here. And so we decided that uh, instead of us hauling water twice a day to the cattle, that uh, it would be easier for us to just go ahead and, and put a uh, pump system in. So we put stock tanks in. Of course, we laid lined all of those. Uh, we put a pump in the pond, you know, uh, put the pressure tank and everything in. So... Yes, that's helped, but in the meantime, you know, it was still, you had to haul water, and of course, like everything else, it was very, very costly. Mm -hmm. Well, and that pond level is starting to go down to uh, levels that are uh, going to be another source of concern here, right? Yes, absolutely. You know, when we started, the pond was pretty much bank full, and as near as I could tell, you know, it's a big pond, an acre pond. I'm saying we're in the neighborhood of five feet down on it already, mm -hmm. and this has been, well, we're almost 60 days into production using that water system. 
and the hi, the problems you've highlighted here on your farm are are reflected and repeated over and over again on livestock producers around around the county. Uh, with livestock, you've got to keep those livestock healthy, and in these hot, dry conditions, that's been a challenge. Uh, what have you done to uh, maximize the comfort and the care for your cattle out here? Well, really try to give everything to them that we possibly can, you know. Starts with, uh, my opinion, the vaccination in the start of the spring, you know, try to do everything, you know, as best as possible. Um, they're on a really good mineral program uh, to try to, you know, help keep their eyes good and, you know, keep their, their digestibility up. And I guess mainly just trying to give them what they need when you think they need it, the best, the best that you can. And Austin is doing the best he can with his family out here. Austin Wiseman, we're in Morgan County in the drought of 2024. For Ohio's Country Journal and Ohio Agnet, I'm Matt Reese.